I'm now going to demonstrate for you how to set up a DNS server. You may want to do this because you are having DNS problems and the easiest way to resolve them is to take complete control of your own DNS domain. Or perhaps you just like to have this sort of control over your network. I'm going to show you here that we have a bunch of DNS settings. This is a little different than we've seen in previous lessons. It shows all the details of our records, and if we had many records, we would have to scroll down to see them all. But we have a record for the primary zone, rock1foamingrocks.com. We have the machine record for that computer. We have a name server for that computer. We also have an automatically generated reverse zone and reverse mapping. So let's just briefly take a look at a machine record, and we see it's got the host name, what zone it's a member of, and the IP address. If you had more than one IP address in there, I assume it would be doing round robin. I haven't actually tested that out as I've had no need to do that. The name server records, again, it's just the DNS name of the computer here where it says name server, and also the DNS name of the zone. And they're still matching because we're still using that minimal DNS server. And one last thing I want to show you is that for a reverse mapping or a reverse zone, we also have a name server. And it is set, again, to the name of our host computer, rock1foamingrocks.com. So let's cancel out of that. Now, how did I get to this detail listing? Well, that's pretty simple. Down here at the bottom, there is something called the action menu, this gear down here, where you can change it to show all records. Now, by default, it looks like this, nice and simple. It just shows us host names. Clicking on that and changing it back, we get to all those detailed records. We also have the ability to add a whole bunch of new records when we show all records. We have the machine records, alias records, mail exchanger, name server, service, primary zone, and secondary zone. Now to change that minimal DNS zone into something more conventional, we want to create a new zone. So I'm going to create foamingrocks.com. And we're going to allow for zone transfers later. Now I have a new primary zone. It doesn't have a name server set yet, so I need to add a name server record just for that zone. And I need to make sure I choose the right zone here. And I can use the machine record from a different zone, just like that. Now we have a zone and a name server for that zone. Let's go ahead and add an A record or what we call a machine record in there. Again, clicking on the plus, it's the very first option. We'll add in rock2. At this point, I want to point out that a big difference from the old server admin is that we definitely should not type out a fully qualified DNS name for the host name. So just rock2, no following period, and we put in the IP address, and that will create the correct machine record. Okay, so now we've got a zone with our name server and a machine record. We'd like to move this machine record from this other zone into this zone. And really the only way to do that is to duplicate that record first. So I'm going to go ahead and create yet another machine record. This one is just for rock one. And we just got to make sure that the IP address is set correctly. Okay, now for the big trick. We're going to take the primary zone that was for our minimal DNS and just remove it. It does warn you. When we remove that, it takes out all those extra records that were associated with that zone. And now we're left with just the foamingrocks.com zone with rock1 in there correctly. And somewhere I mistyped and we have a mistake. So this gives me a perfect opportunity to demonstrate deleting a machine record. Now let's double check our reverse mapping. We see that the reverse mapping for 102 here does reverse back to rock two, but I am missing my rock one machine mapping. So I need to add that one back in. Server app and Mountain Lion Server are fairly forgiving with respect to editing the DNS zones, and there seems to be far fewer of the timeouts that we used to get with server admin. Now let's just double check that reverse mapping for 101, and we see that it does indeed work. Now with DNS, it's always a good idea 
to test, test, test the system. So I'm going to quickly bring up my launch pad, go into the other group, and go into network utility. Here we are in the lookup tab, and I'm going to look up my foaming rocks zone. If I make the window a little larger, we can see that it did return some information about our zone. It told me that the name server for that zone is rock1.foamingrocks.com, and it even gave me the IP address for that machine. So here's where it's telling me the name server, here's where it's telling me the IP address, and it all looks authentic and correct. Now, of course, we have a few other details that we would like to manage with respect to our DNS zone. Note that up here you can uncheck mark this performing lookups for all clients. You can change it from all clients to only some clients. If you do only some clients, you have three easy options here. The server itself, clients on the local network, clients on a network that you specify or more than one network. And this follows something called CIDR notation. That's classless internet domain routing. And what we are going to do here is put in a host number for the start of the network. And then I'll just put in a slash 16, which means that all the networks that begin with 192.168 and then dot something dot something, all those IP addresses are allowed to make DNS calls to my DNS server. Now, for the rest of the class, I'm going to actually just change it back to all clients. But you may need those restrictions on there so that others outside your work group or outside your network are not using your DNS server to make DNS queries across the globally hierarchical DNS system. And another detail, we typically have mail servers and it's very easy to set one up. You can either do it in this view by coming down here to the plus and saying add mail exchange record where you need to type in all this information. I'm gonna show you an even easier way. Switch it back to the simple view and we select the host computer that we want to be our mail server, and we edit it by either coming down here and saying edit host name, or just double clicking on it will work too. And down at the bottom of the editing window, we can see that it says create an MX record for this host name. So if we do that, we have our mail exchanger created for us. And it does show up if we go back to the show all records view. Note that it's right there, and if we double click on it, we can edit it here if any of these details are incorrect. Really the only thing to change at this point would be say the priority, but zero is the highest priority, oddly enough, and that's usually okay. One last detail, if you need to get more information about the DNS service than I have shown you here, and you wanna do it in an Apple sort of way, you might want to resort to the command line as I'm doing here, I brought up terminal, expanded it to make it a little easier to read, and there is this command called server admin that we've seen before. And we can do things like ask for the status on our DNS service. And it says it's running. We can ask for a full status. And we need to make sure that we put our spaces between the operators. And we also need to make sure we take out the word status when we are asking for a full status. And it gives us the full status, tells us where the log file is for that bind process tells us what version of bind we're currently running on our Mac OS X server. And if you need much more detail or want to back up all these settings that you've put in, you can use the settings command. And that can be sent out to a text file. There's also a plist version that we could export. It has similar information to that which is stored in the DNS zone files. It's just another way of making an archive or a backup copy of all these settings so that we don't have to go into server app and do them over and over again should we have a problem on our server, like say a crashed hard drive. So that's setting up DNS, and next up we should see how to set up a secondary DNS server.